In this video, we're gonna be going over a pretty awesome new update for Zoho Desk, uh, which is all gonna be about its new generative AI tool and how that can actually be used to expedite the management of your tickets. So before I do jump in, I wanna ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave any questions and video requests in the comment section. And if you end up needing help on your Zoho installation, just head on over to zanata.com click on book a meeting and we'll be talking to you in no time. With that, let's jump right on into the video. Um, so if you remember last week in the world of CRM, uh, Zoho actually rolled out this announcement about their new LLM, so a large language model similar to like a chat GPT and how they're gonna use that in CRM for their smart prompt functionality. I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole on smart prompt. We actually have another video that we put out last week on that topic, but they are working hard on this because this week what they've done is actually announce a generative AI tool, again, using that LLM for Zoho Desk. And honestly, I think this one's even better than the CRM AI that they've rolled out. So what this is, is now that they have their own large language model, they're adding it to Zoho Desk to really shoot for certain key goals, right? So a couple goals are faster response time for tickets, managing a lot of routine stuff more easily, right? Like password resets or really common issues that just come up all the time. Managing the consistencies across agents, right? In an ideal world, when you email support at Zanata.com, the answer should be pretty much the same regardless of who happens to be the person who handles that particular request. Getting more information about each customer as you are managing the ticket. So like somebody who's never had an issue before, versus somebody who's had a lot of issues with the product, you might need to approach it a little differently. And then pulling out additional insights from their data, right? And really what this means is if you have a customer that you've been working with, especially in like a service business for multiple years, it's just really hard to like scan through all those communications with them and make sure that you're referencing the most important things when you're interacting with that particular customer. Their goal in rolling this out is really just to tackle those key items and so what we're going to do here is just go through and highlight some of the specific things that this tool is going to be able to do for you. Right off the bat, really, the way this will work is while you're inside of a ticket, you'll have this little tab where you can use Zia powered by their tool. And so one of the things you can do is essentially pull in contextual ticket summaries. So what this means is like maybe this ticket's been going back and forth for quite a while. Maybe you're a manager who just had a ticket escalated to you and you don't want to have to read through like 20 or 30 emails that have gone back and forth. You can use this contextual summary to essentially pull in a high level summary of all of the information about that ticket, everything that's been communicated, committed to, what have they said, what have we said. Right. So if you see over here, it's like, hey, the customer is going to get a replacement. We're going to send it by today. It's going to be free because it's under warranty. Right. So as a manager, I don't need to read through every single ticket in detail. I can get this summary and then dig in maybe to confirm certain key details. Now, within that, you can actually also filter down. So you can say like, hey, you know what? I only want to get a summary of the last 30 conversations or like back and forths. Or maybe I only want to get a summary of the things that they've sent us, not our responses. Uh, maybe I want to exclude comments or things that are forwarded. So you'll kind of have some knobs here that you can turn to make sure that the summary you're going to get is going to be the most useful one for you. Now, here's a huge one. Um, another thing they've added are efficient responses with AI assistance. And so... Here we can see in this image, I mean, we have this ticket, right? The the AI has read it and it kind of knows what's going on. And it's basically written us a response based on the things that are in our knowledge base. This is huge, right? I mean, one of the biggest things about knowledge bases is that, yeah, it's great. You can put all this information into them. But as a knowledge base continues to grow and grow and grow, it becomes harder to actually access it and find the answers that you need. And so what this is, it's basically saying, hey, I've read through this ticket. Here's my response that I think is correct. And here are the sources of where I got this information, right? So in this case, you know, it's saying, hey, we're going to do this refund in one to three business days. Well, it pulled that from our article on the refund process guidelines. 
right? So it's essentially going to scrape your information, your policies, your solutions, your resolutions, and it's going to give you that summarized answer that you can literally just click use as reply and boom, it's going to drop it right into the ticket. Or you can ask the bot additional questions and kind of have it add some more information to that reply. But on top of that, that's not all because what you can also do is as you are interacting with that reply and it's drafting you a response, you can actually make sure that it matches the tone of that conversation. The bot is essentially going to read through that, figure out, hey, are they happy? Are they angry? Are they curious? Is this just a request for information? And then it's ideally going to structure its response to match that, right? So here we can see it's going to make an assumption and say, hey, we're going to write this as diplomatic. But I could say, hey, you know what? Make it humorous. I know this customer, they're fine. They, you know, they like for things to be a little funny. Um, so you can essentially go in and tell it, hey, you've written me this response. That's all fine and well, but let's make it a little more formal or a little less formal or a little more assertive, right? If it's maybe a difficult customer. On top of that, we can also tell it to make things shorter or longer. Right. So as a general rule, like maybe you have certain customers that, you know, they don't want to read five paragraphs. It's like, hey, they just want to know, yes, you're going to get this credit back. It's going to be there in three days. This is the amount that it's going to be for. Boom. Put it nice and simple. Make it clean. Make it easy. Versus maybe other customers are going to require a bit longer explanations to make sure that you're kind of fleshing out any detail that's important for them. Now. One last thing here that they've added, and I really want to emphasize for you, don't ignore this part. If you're going to use this tool, commit to using it right. And so what this is, is essentially a feedback mechanism so that you can continue to grow your knowledge base. So if we go back up and we look at the original like response that it wrote up for us here, what you can see is that it's pulling from sources. And this is what you want, right? You do not want your bots that's going to be helping you answer tickets for your customers to be pulling a lot of information from the open internet, right? And so this is really one of the powers of having one of these bots wrapped up in Zia is that it's going to contextually do things based on the information that you've provided it, right? Because if you were just to do a Google search for refund policy, right? Like, do you want to trust that the bot is going to just grab one that matches yours? No right? You want it to be pulling as much as possible from your own knowledge base. And so as you're using this bot, if it runs into a scenario where it doesn't have anything useful in the knowledge base to actually create an answer for you, it's going to actually let you know that, right? And through this little interface, I can create an article and maybe I'm not going to write the whole article right now. It can kind of go into a list for me to finalize later. But I can create that article so that we know, hey, you know what? We actually need to have an article on the RMA process or our process for refunds or our process for returns, right? So you're actually adding these things to your list so that next time around, you already have that answer, right? And now the bot can answer the second or third ticket about that topic for you automatically. Here as well, just one last little note on data privacy. So the GDPR guidelines here, it's not going to be sending any of this data externally. This is all running internally. And the responses are going to be generated from your knowledge base only. So again, if you're going to use this, you're going to need to have a well-defined knowledge base that has a lot of useful information. And realistically, the way that I would recommend you get started on this is like fill in your knowledge base with the easy low-hanging fruit, right? The return policy, refund policy, uh, warranty details and where to find those, right? Because you're going to get a lot of tickets about those. They're generally easy to answer. And so in those types of cases, you could get to a place where nine out of 10 tickets that have to do with a lot of those like baseline policy things, you're just clicking use as reply and sending it out, right? You're not having to do a lot of work. But then over time, as you start to get more, you know, off the wall questions or things that you didn't think about documenting, Make sure to use this, uh, you know, kind of knowledge based growth functionality to be creating those articles and making sure that you're getting them populated so that in the future, again, you just don't have to say the same thing all over again. Now, if you check out this article, the link will be in the description below. They do also include a full walkthrough on how exactly to set this up. 
right? So essentially you're going to be going in, activating this, like they're mentioning, you're not using a, a chat GPT. So everything is going to just be directly inside of the Zoho ecosystem. Really nice for those who work in more, you know, compliance specific areas where data security is more tightly managed. Um, so again, make sure to check out this article here. It'll walk you through a couple of the more fine details and how to actually configure it inside of your system. At the end of the day though, very easy to turn it on. You'll just need to apply for early access if you're watching this now. If you're watching this in three months, it's probably already turned on. And then go into your settings and get this thing turned on for your team. Um, so yeah, hope this was helpful. We wanted to make sure that everybody saw this article um, because this is a really big update, right? And like for me, I'm already thinking about like for our own processes as well as for a lot of our clients, like this is going to add a whole bunch of value and I think it's going to save people a lot of time. Right. I mean, even if you get one of these replies that it writes for you and you make a couple tweaks to it, still faster than writing it from scratch. So make sure if you did find this video useful, leave us a like down below. Subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. Um, I'd be interested to hear in the comments, like, how are people feeling about some of these AI tools that Zoho is rolling out? You know, are you finding them useful? Do these come off a bit like shiny objects where you don't really think it's going to be something that uh, affects you very much and how your day-to-day -day workflow uh, kind of operates? Really curious to see that. Um, so leave a comment down below. We do try to read through and respond to as many of those as we can get to every single week. And with that, I think we're ready to wrap up the video for today. So thanks again for watching and we will see you next time.